Today we're going to talk about my bag o training mags. How I have them set up, why I have them set up that way, and how you can have your magazines hooked up in a way that makes you ready for training and ready for the street. I'm also going to give you a little pro tip about how you can find magazines after you've lost them in a long day of training. Stick around. All right, man, take a seat, buckle up. We're nearly, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I... So, I often hear people that should know better talking about spring set in magazines, how if you leave your mags loaded, uh, the springs will set in a certain condition and all the way at the bottom and so they won't feed ammunition as well. Now this has a couple of problems with it. One is that it is based upon an assumption that springs take a set inside of magazines which was kind of true in the early days of magazine fed weapons when we didn't know a lot about springs and metallurgy but is no longer true today with the way magazines are designed. You see a spring has a certain compression length, okay? And you can compress it within the length that it's designed to compress through, and it will continue to hold tension even if it stays at that length. Now, what wears a spring out is constant letting out and coming back in in its designed compression length, or overextending that length, crushing that spring down, and causing it to take a set. Now, in a modern magazine, you don't have problems with the spring getting crushed too much. They're designed to be within the compression length of the spring. Now in early magazines, really early, we're talking early, early 1908, 1909, in that time frame, turn of the 20th century time period, there were magazines that were improperly made because we didn't know a lot about metallurgy and we knew even less about springs that would overextend and over crush the springs. And so you had early spring where you would have what was be now considered called spring set but we haven't had that problem in at least since since the outbreak of world war ii that really hasn't been an issue most springs now that are put inside of magazines are made so that they're not going to take a set so that's not really an issue anymore what is an issue is the contraction and release of the springs over and over and over and over and over again so if you train a lot like you should you should have two different sets of magazines for any firearms that you're training with. One set that is your duty set that you keep loaded with your duty ammo and then about once a year I suggest or twice a year or every other year whatever time period you train change out your duty ammo you should be shooting your duty ammo through your duty weapon out of your duty magazines to make sure the whole thing is working properly. But you shouldn't be using them for training. Those magazines should be when you go to do your training, your monthly training, your weekly training, or whatever time period of training you do, you should be pulling those duty magazines out and you should be loading them up with training magazines. Your training magazines, ideally, you just use the old duty magazines. The way I work it is that the first time my gun has any problems with a magazine, I pull that $25 to $30 Glock magazine out of it and I set it to the side and I go pull another one out of the trunk of my car that is brand new and I start using that magazine for duty use. So if I go to qualify and I have a failure to feed out of one of my magazines, I pull it to the side and I get rid of that magazine and I make it into a training magazine. And then when the training magazines stop working almost entirely, then I get rid of those. So these are my four training magazines that I have for my handgun and a couple of the rifle training magazines that I have right now. And I unload the magazines and reload the magazines to do training. So if I do a class of 1100 rounds, 15 rounds of magazine, plus one in the pipe, you can do all the calculations for how many ins and outs of the springs. But I can tell you something is that the training magazines go bad, that I'm constantly cycling way faster, regardless of whether they're left loaded or unloaded, than my duty magazines that stay on my belt. I'll get five or six years out of a duty magazine. The training magazines, once it hits the training cycle, psh, it's over. It's, it gets very quickly destroyed from loading and unloading and loading and unloading and loading and unloading. So what I do to set up the training mags so that I can find them after a long day of training, let's say I drop one of them on the ground, we're doing low light shoot, it falls in the grass, whatever the case may be, 
it's dark out, I can't find the magazines. Of course, all of these are dark colors because, hey, that's what's cool. I take reflective striping that you can get at any truck stop at 3 a.m. Notice I love buying things at truck stops at 3 a.m. This one I got for 15 cents. This is enough to do all of my magazines over again if I had to. And I cut off squares of it, and I put them on the bottom of the mag. Or I wrap them around the mag in the case of a rifle mag. So what this does is it allows me, after dark, when training is all over for the day, which is normally when we're getting done, you know, they always want to start late and end late and get live fire, low light stuff done. I can walk around the field and shine my flashlight in the field or wherever it was we were training, and this stuff will glint back at me. So I'll roll in a little video of that now. All right, so you lose a magazine, and training day's over. So we start scanning the field, and if it was like a black magazine normally, you'd be kind of out of luck, but uh, put a little reflective tape on the bottom of it. Hopefully this is picking it up. You can walk right up to it, because it'll reflect back to you. Even at quite a big distance. And there she is. So there you can see how well that works with uh, handgun magazines. That you know, you have to walk around in a circle sometimes to get uh, the glint back because you can only obviously put on the base plate. If you put on the side of the magazine, it's going to get all gunked up inside the gun. Another thing that adding reflective material to the bottom of the mag allows me to do is keep tracks of which mags are having which problems. And I do that by numbering the magazines. You can see I've got three magazines that have each only ever had one failure to feed. They used to be duty magazines. And then I have magazine number two, which I have consistently had problems at my last training class with. Now, magazine number two here is the only magazine that's marked right now because magazine number one found its way into the garbage because I don't fiddle around with changing springs out and changing followers out of magazines. These are $30 at the most for me to buy. I can find them oftentimes on sale for 20 bucks at police stores and stuff, so I can get a brand new one for 20 bucks. Why screw with it and buy a $15 spring kit? I just throw the things away when they get too bad where I don't want to deal with them anymore. But that's how you make sure your magazines are going to work when you're on duty and find your mags when you drop them somewhere and it's dark out late at night at a training class and keep track of even a black magazine without having to run around and find a paint pen. Because as you've seen on my other videos, the Sharpie marker should be on you all the time anyway because it's great for all sorts of things. This is just one of them. This solves a lot of problems for us. So keep that in mind. That's your little pro tip for the day. Magazines do not wear out from being loaded. They wear out from compression and relaxation. So you don't have to worry about wearing out your magazines by keeping them loaded. You don't have to rotate your duty magazines. In fact, I suggest you don't do that. If you rotate them, you're just wearing all of them equally. And so now you've got just as much chance of it going bad, whether if it's... Uh, five months old and six years old and there's no way to keep track of them. You really should have two separate sets of magazines, even if you have to buy, you know, eight of them all at once to get yourself two sets of magazines. That's really not that bad when you talk about the total cost of your equipment. So you guys be safe. So check out the Patreon. We've already got a few supporters who are on there and making very generous, generous donations on a monthly basis. If we get uh, $200 a month worth of donations, so if we get $200 a month pledged, I will not monetize any new videos for the first week they're out. So if you're a regular subscriber, you won't have to watch ads when you watch free field training videos anymore. And I think that's uh, probably the best perk I could come up with. I don't want to create special rewards for people that donate $1 or $5 or $50 or anything like that. I'm not I'm not saying I, I would not never do that in the future if that's something people are interested in, but I'd rather keep all of the content out there in the open for everyone free and not have Patreon-only content or not have to put 20 ads on every video to try to make enough money to replace this really, really crappy camera that I'm filming this on. So you guys be safe. We will see you next week, probably with another pro tip. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but uh, when I know, I'll let you guys know. Stay safe. Well, now, if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe, because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, go 10-8.
County 291. 